Yeah, response video to Antikontavad, of course. Eh, it really isn't a course, right? You don't have to do it. But he hasn't made a video in a while. But it's the same old subject. We're back on guilt again. And he means by guilt any thought you have regarding taking responsibility. So let's say you're walking down the sidewalk and you're eating a banana. And the banana just falls out of your hand. You're almost done and it falls out of your hand. And you just don't, you just like, you don't care. Okay, I mean, it falls out of your hand. It hits the ground. You're not going to eat the rest of it. But then you think about, oh, a banana peel, that's right, people, you know, it's kind of a joke, but they slip on these things. And so that very act of having a thought, recognizing an implication, a negative implication, um, is his definition of some bad act. You shouldn't have given it a second thought. You should have just kept walking because it doesn't affect you. The banana's behind you. You're not going to slip on it. So there's no reason to worry about it. You never worry about anything that's going to happen to somebody else, because that's guilt. You only worry about what's going to happen to you, because that's not guilt. You can't feel guilty about protecting yourself from harm, but if you're protecting somebody else from harm, it's always guilt-ridden. It's always an imposition of irrationality, an irrational response recognizing harm and then recognizing that it, your your understanding of the negativeness of harm extends to other people. And as soon as you extend your recognition that harm extends to other people, you have now committed an irrational act of guilt. Guilt, guilt, guilt. You've been drowning in guilt now. I mean, it's just the silliest, stupidest argument. Clearly, emotions give us the capacity to do value equations. They create value. We wouldn't know that value could exist if it wasn't for our capacity to feel, to feel good and to feel bad. And that is how all value is assigned, is through our, our liberality, our willingness to give of that feeling. The fact that we can feel bad in feeling concerned for another's welfare is as fundamental to being an intelligent human being as E equals MC squared. It is fundamental intelligence. You can't be intelligence if you deny the, the, the fact that you're going to have to eventually <laughs> emote to recognize value. It has to be tied to an emotion somewhere. So you can call any recognition of responsibility an act of guilt, but it is it is an act of responsibility. It isn't guilt. It's the same feeling, but it's a, it's a fundamentally required to be able to acknowledge the existence of the harm. You can't really acknowledge its existence without feeling something. It's just the way the brain works, you fucking idiot. So anyway. Well, I mean, it's just a bunch of nonsense in the beginning. It always is. Blah, 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 blah. Drivel, travel, drivel, travel. So we'll start about here. I haven't watched the whole thing, but it's just horrid. Uh, I think that it's fantastic. It's extremely useful in so many ways to clarify things. Um, you mentioned David Bennett. Okay, so he, he was talking about antinatalism and just saying how oh, it's not practical, it's not this, it's not that, but it's good for, it's a useful conversational tool. And again, we'll just make the argument that it's a tiny percentage of the human race that has all of the excess population and all of the sustainable population. Most women have one child or less. Um, certainly most women have less than three children, which is required to maintain human population, practically speaking. And that's just a fact. And so you can keep pretending like there's something inevitable about it, but there's nothing inevitable about it, just like vegetarianism. Billions of people get along just fine without having kids. It's not something you have to do. It's all just brain and psychology, and it's correctable that quickly with thoughts. That's all. So you can keep pretending it's an insurmountable problem, and it's not. Especially when you consider the deplorable circumstances under which most people are born. Well, a subject I will get to in the next video. And I think that his book is very useful in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the most useful is the way that things like guilt can be intellectualized. 
where it's it seems like it's common sense. It oh, seems yeah. like so again, he's arguing that you don't intelligently recognize the risk of the banana, that it's all some sort of emotional bullshit, that you don't intelligently process the equation and say, oh, it would be very little work for me to pick up the banana peel, and it could save somebody from becoming paralyzed. And so you logically do the equation, and yes, you might feel some sensation um, that makes it possible for you to actually go to the effort to do it, um, because we seem dependent on emotionalizing things to be able to move, so you have to emotionalize it, and so you have to say, well, Gary, you're going to be a real asshole if you don't turn around and pick up the banana peel. And it's just a fact. When I say, Gary, you're going to be an asshole, it's a true statement. The fact that I feel guilt or I feel like I'm violating something, well, that's what the statement's saying. You're violating something. You should feel like you're violating if you're violating. I mean, what are you supposed to feel when you're violating somebody else's interest, when you're compromising their welfare? What are you supposed to feel but something negative, like you're compromising somebody's welfare? I mean, it would be stupid if you felt happy about it. No, you feel kind of disappointed that you didn't think of it sooner, that you were willing to start walking away, leaving the banana peel behind. Even as litter alone, you could feel guilty. Because, yeah, somebody might step in it and just not like it on their fucking shoe. They don't even have to fall down. What if some dog ate it and got sick? Oh, fuck. The, uh, the point of view that you're being asked to subscribe to is common sense. Benatar's uh, point of view. Right, is, and the common sense recognition is, is that there is this problematic bad apple syndrome. One bad apple does ruin the pie, and the fact is that um, suffering, pain, has, has a higher gravity, specific gravity, uh, uh, value weight, um, than, you know, frivolous ambition satisfied. Lamborghini. Um, whereas it's actually, um, it's actually a very, very clever and scientific sounding and perhaps most fascinating of all, sincere. Um, oh yeah, so this is all so complicated, right? So, so what he's talking about, right? He should just get to it before he does all this drivel drivel build up is the simple argument that Gee, having kids means it might suffer. <laughs> yeah, oh man, that's, that's, boy, is that ever a disguised piece of logic, isn't it? Isn't that, isn't that just playing, oh, he's manipulating the sunlight just right to make that, that rock look like a pear, look, look like a, a yummy strawberry. No, it seems like a perfectly sensible thing to be aware of is that, yes, if you have a child, it may suffer. It will likely suffer something, and it may su suffer substantially. Oh, gee, that's too much thinking. People shouldn't be required to do that much thinking before having a baby. It's not like they're playing God or something. Oh, wait a minute. Infliction of guilt. His book is absolutely riddled with existential guilt. And yeah, it's a book about value. That's right, and responsibility. That's right. That it's on you, fucker. This is here. I'm going to spell it out for you. Okay? This is the equation. There's banana peels all over the fucking place. Right? You can help clean up the banana peels or you can throw banana peels. Those are your choices in life. Oh, gee. And basically, the, he's pointing the finger at the human race and saying, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You yeah. And, like, there isn't a million things you could point your finger at about the human race and say you should be ashamed of yourself. Deficits, for example. So by this guy's judgment, right, somebody should just spend on the credit card. You know, just get yourself a credit card and whore out on it. Force the company to sue you, right? And, um, you know, do that with everything in your life. Just be a fucking slut. Go to the store, buy shit, eat half of it, take it back, say there was a worm in it. Complain. Bitch. So they have to give you back your money, right? To wear, go to the store, buy clothes, wear them, then take them back. You know, fart in the underwear and shit. Do whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter. It's not your money. It's the other customer's money. Who the fuck cares? 
Don't feel responsible or guilty about anything. Just be a motherfucking train wreck. Just fucking burn everything around you. Be as napalmy as possible. Just fucking burn it all down because you like to roast marshmallows. Fuck. You should be ashamed of yourselves simply for being what you are. I'll uh, go through a quote. Well, yeah, well, whatever. What you are. Being what you are. So he's saying what we are isn't after sex. What we are is after babies, okay? So we're all child molesters who want to have a kid so we can play with its winky. What else do you do with a kid but molest it? Is there some other fuck fun? <laughs> do they do something else? There's no other reason to have one but to molest it, right? Pick one of, uh, from his book. And, um... Quite apart from the case that he's making, look at the amount of guilt that he heaps onto uh, his argument. Look at this drama. Look at the amount of crap you heap on the crap you spew. I mean, you spew crap, and then you pile crap on top of the crap and make it all so fucking dramatic. And then you smile through the whole thing like it's all, look how crazy these people are. <laughs> I mean, come on, fuck you. Oh, man, this is like Mr. Reverse Psychology talking about reverse psychology. Oh, fuck. Um, we infrequently contemplate the harms that await the newborn child, pain, disappointment, anxiety, grief, and death. For any given child, we cannot predict what form these harms will take or how... See, he could have put in, like, their sickness, terminal sickness. <laughs> it might have been even a better one, right? Well, he might have had disease in there. Um, but, um, yeah, we infrequently, and maybe we shouldn't be so infrequent. Yeah, that's right. If we're going to go out in the road and... You know, maybe we should think about whether our brakes work. And when the last time we had the car, had maintenance done on the car. Oh, no, 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 let's just do that infrequently. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> yeah. How severe they will be. But we can be sure that at least some of them will occur. None of this befalls the non-existent. Only existers suffer harm. Now... Think about it. Yeah, think about just the simple logic of it, right? You have this thing called fail-safe over here. No harm can be done. And then you have, oh, maybe we'll have a good American Idol show on TV and millions of people will get all drooly over it. But it comes at the price of infant leukemia and shit. Oh, oh it's just it's special enough. Yeah, so we'll open the door to preposterous harm so we can have, what, satisfied, silly ambitions. Oh, uh, okay. This, we infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child. Okay, let's take that statement at face value. Let's assume that it's true. The backhand to that is... Well, let's assume that it's true. I think it's, I mean, it's pretty damn fucking right on true, right? How many people who are trying to have a baby, or having a baby, are thinking about the fact that, oh, I wonder what my kid will die of. Hmm. Gee, my genetics aren't too good. Um, yeah. I mean, my mother had breast cancer. I mean, if we have a girl, she's going to, you know, maybe she have to have her breast cut off. I mean, that's going to suck. Yeah, that's right. But people don't do that, do they? And you know they don't do that. That's right. And these people suck. People are, all people are thinking is ooey gooey. I'm going to get to go ooey gooey and say other funny little things. And I'll be able to make faces and go black, 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 and do other kinds of goofy things until it's old enough for me to molest. Shouldn't infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child. Guilt. Yeah, whatever. Responsibility. Okay, so guilt, responsibility is a silly word. Nobody should take responsibility for anything. Everybody should just run the fuck away from being reasonable and rational about the mess they're making. Just make a fucking mess. Who cares? Somebody else will have to clean it up. What do you care? You're not a janitor, are you? It's not your problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy is just, why don't you just make videos explaining to young punk vandals how to really enjoy it. 
um, that we should always have it on our minds, or at least more than we do. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, be fair. You shouldn't have it always on your mind, but you should be aware that you have resolved the issue, that you are comfortable with the fact that your child will die, and that you're likely to have no control over them dying or how they die, because you're not going to be around anymore. And they might be poor, and they might be a lot of things, and it might not go well at all. And you're okay with that because, well, it's okay. That's just the way it is. I didn't invent the world. I just keep farting babies into it. <laughs> yeah, right. I get you. Don't think about building a nest. Ne bu building a nest is way too much trouble. Just lay your egg on a steaming pile of shit. That's what smart people do. Especially smart people on the internuts. Oh. Um, the sort of butterfly effect of anything that we ever do. This actually is kind of... Uh... Yeah, well, let's be sure. We know there's no butterfly effect statistically, right? We know the raw statistics. We know the photon isn't going to go to France, okay? Even if we buy this nonsense that it's drifting around somewhere, it's drifting around in a bucket, okay? It's not drifting around in France and then it goes off and takes a trip to Pluto and goes wherever the hell it wants. No, it has set probabilities and set um, uh, uh, likelihoods. All right, and the fact is when you're rolling these dice, okay, the little skull and crossbones are on the dice. They're there, okay? The cancer is there. All these things are on the dice, and there's no pretending because you haven't rolled them yet that all of a sudden they're not on the dice. They're on the dice. They're going to be on the dice when you roll, and the results are going to be consistent with that. So, yes, if you roll the dice, you're opening the door to the skull and crossbones. So that's the only way the skull and crossbones can show up on the dice is some asshole has to roll them. Duh. Smiley. Guilting goes far beyond having babies, by the way. We infrequently contemplate the harms that await, uh, or the harms that are potentially caused by any action. Yeah, ever. That's right, and, and that's a bad thing. You think, you think we should have maybe paid more attention to the fact that, you know, Fukushima? You think we should have paid more attention to make sure that shit doesn't turn into shit? That we have some control over the stuff that does happen? That we should do something to mitigate against it? We shouldn't just sit back and pretend we have no control, because guess what? We have a ton of control, and you certainly have control over reproduction. Um, and, okay, we can either say that, okay, that statement is true, that we infrequently contemplate it, and we can go either way. We can say, uh, yes, we infrequently contemplate that, but we should contemplate it more frequently than we do. We could think that, and that's sort of the implication. It's sort of reasonable, that's right. You're playing fucking God with something else's welfare, and you ought to maybe just contemplate what the likely outcome is, which is it's going to die. And it's going to die a certain way at a certain age after certain circumstances, and you should account for the possibilities. You should look at all the faces on the dice before you roll them. Just look at them and say, I acknowledge you, I acknowledge you, I acknowledge you, I acknowledge what the possibilities are. That, that seems the minimum you can do. A minimum amount of turning around and picking up the banana peel. It's not asking for much, you pig. ...in what he's saying. He's saying that it's bad that we infrequently contemplate the harms that await a newborn child. Or at least that's assumed. How about we just read it this way? We infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child because that's the way we are put together. It is not in our mental makeup. Oh, there you go. I mean, where do you go with this? Where, where do you go with this? So there's no point in being a human being and having the faculty of logic because we're just supposed to act like fucking apes. So if apes go out and kill each other without machetes, with their bare hands and their teeth, and they rip each other's heads off in a... In a brutal, horrid, mass murder. We should take that as the example, and yes, we should allow our rage to own us. 
we should behave like fucking monkeys because that's our nature and you people applaud this crap this absolute steaming pile of shit it's our nature I mean really do you buy this you really believe that you can't uh, our nature, Mr. Walnut, <laughs> Mr. Walnut, I like that, uh, is what we're on this planet to overcome. Well, you know, she says, like, God put us here to overcome, but, you know, I'll take the God part out. But, yeah, I mean, really, you can't, you can't sit there and, and disgrace more thoroughly the only faculty that gives us any value or meaning. Ooh, that's, that reminds me of Spencer Tracy in Inherit the Wind. Yeah, he has a great little line in there about it's the only thing that distinguishes us from the mosquito and the fucking dung beetle is the fact that we can think. And you don't want us to think. You want us to feel and just act on a feeling. And that's disgusting. You fucking monster. to think along those lines. <laughs> now, <laughs> that <may> <laughs> Yeah, you really don't want to be doing that thinking thing. <laughs> think? No, that's a bad word. Think. May be the case as well. Because I agree, we do infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child, but maybe we are like that because that's not the way that our minds work. Well, whatever. Again, our minds work. So you have some theory on how our minds work that we recognize I'm not the only person on planet Earth. The banana peel is dangerous. I should pick up the, the banana peel. So I've just committed a grotesque violation of my nature because I've considered that no matter who it is coming behind me, whether it's an enemy gorilla or not, it's not nice to make things fall down and go boom. Oh, God, you suck. I mean, this is, he's just like, you know, he's, this is like the bigots must love this kind of crap, right? Because he's just saying, yeah, wallow in your disgust and your despise. Hate them darkies because that's what you're made to be. You're your kind. You're not their kind. Yeah. Yes, build more fences and more walls and drop more bombs because that's what you feel. You feel the hate. Go with the hate. Fuck, because that's the animal you are. Go with the animal you are. Don't be guilted out of having a good bloody war. <laughs> yeah. Amazing fuck nut. He could counter that with, well, then your mind should work that way. Guilt. <laughs> um... Only existers suffer. I mean, really, we all should be feeling guilty that we allow sociopaths. I mean, that this is this is actually we just don't have a war against the Nietzscheites and get them out of here. I mean, this is just such bad blood. I mean, come on, this is fucking evil shit. Ugh. Look at him, he's scary as hell. For harms. In other words, if you bring anyone into existence, you're essentially responsible or you're complicit in the harms that befall them. Uh, yeah, that's like sort of what you, what you, one of those things you call an actual fact. Duh. Fact. Duh. Yeah, I mean, it's just too fucking obvious that if you do it, you did it. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Well, I don't know, Gary. You're asking an awful lot for people to understand that. You mean if they do something, they done did it? Oh, I don't think so. They're not going to go for that. Uh, guilt. It's a fascinating um, case study. Um, David Benatar's uh, Better Never to Have Been. In the extent to which guilty conscience has suffused the modern mind. And he's pushed it to the point where uh, something that I say that in Mendeman. And so, so what he's saying is some kind of grotesque over-emotionalism because he dared to say, look, there's a negative potential consequence. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's way, oh, he went way over the edge, way over the edge. And his book is full of gory pictures. You should see it. It's got, like, blood and guts and, like, deformed humans and all kinds of horrid pictures. Oh, no, it doesn't have any of that. That's no. done. Where people will look at this, people will look at the lengths to which, which he will force the issue of guilt, and they will reject guilt. <laughs> And it will not have the effect that the good Mr. Bennett... Well, I don't think so. Anybody who's read his book is going to be... It has to have some intellectual character, okay? Because it's not a fun read or an easy read. And it is so clinical and so uncheery and fun. There's no way that anybody's going to have an emotional reaction to the book. It just doesn't even... It doesn't provide you any opportunity to emotionally react. Or expected it to have, if you ask me. Well, I didn't ask you. Did any of you other assholes ask this fucking butt munch? No, I didn't. I know I didn't. People will simply say, okay, either I stop being myself. Um, I yeah, I stop being myself, which means I stop being somebody who looks at the dice before I roll them. That's what he's saying, okay? Be clear. Benatar's just saying, look at the fucking dice before you roll them. That's what he's saying. And this butthead is saying, no, don't look at the dice. You don't care what the dice say. The dice are bullshit. All right? Do whatever the fuck. Roll, roll your fucking head off if you feel like rolling. And don't be looking at nothing, because it doesn't matter. You're not the victim. <laughs> Why are you worrying about your brakes, fucker? You got a big, heavy car. Little people, you hit a few little people, so the fuck what? It's not going to bother you any. Shit. No, this is just, this is goddamn, I mean, I just, I'm just amazed at you fuck nuts. Saying, not calling this guy, calling him on this bullshit. I'm just amazed. I'm surprised and amazed. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm disgusted, surprised and amazed. I stop existing. I deliberately railroad my own. DNA and my own whatever instincts or drives or desires or anything that I have to procreate. I deliberately railroad those. Well, whatever. Again, so he says we have some kind of will to procreate, and I think that's just made-up nonsense. We have a will to have sex, and nature's always been fooling animals forever. Do you think the salmon, when they're going upstream, are thinking about procreating? Do you really think they know, oh yeah, I'm swimming upstream to procreate, I'm going to make little baby salmon? Do you think any of that's going on? No, none of that's going on. You think when a lion is, you know, whamming the bitch, he's thinking, I'm making cubs, I'm making cubs. Do you think that's going on, moron? No, but somehow he's still doing it, isn't he? Oh, that's right, because he just wants to fucking have sex. <sighs> I mean, so quit mixing the subjects, please. You have, you have a cultural attachment right to like rugby or something so let's call that pro procreation and you're just you can't how do people not want to play rugby because i'm such a whore for it but yeah i don't want to play rugby i don't want to have kids nothing inside of me makes me want to have kids i never at any point in my life said i want to go make a baby so i can be responsible for it for 18 years and i can worry about its welfare and every time I cross the street, I have to make sure I can grab its hand because I don't want something to hurt it. I'd be worried about it all the time. I want to be worried all the time. Yeah. For the rest of my life, I want to be worried all the time. No, I don't think I want to do that. Or I dispense with the guilt. Yeah, that whatever. comes from me doing those things. Yeah, being responsible sucks. Oh, oh, oh. I think that most... Don't be responsible. That's what he's saying, people. He's saying, don't be a responsible human being. Be an asshole. Be a monkey. Be a baboon. Be a lizard. But don't be a responsible human being. That's what he's saying. Most people are going to dispense with the guilt. And that's why I say that in Mendham has, in many ways, abolished guilt as a viable concept. And I think that David Bennett... Well, I'm not going to argue this nonsense. I've abolished guilt as a useful emotion. Fuck guilt. 
okay, in the sense of I'm going to wallow in it or something. I'm just going to sit around in my guilt and stew in it. Yeah, that guilt, fuck that. All right, any kind of guilt that makes you turn around and pick up the banana peel, yeah, go with that one. Or has done the same thing. Um, both of them are essentially saying you should be ashamed for being what you are. Well, whatever. I, they're not saying you should be ashamed. You should be cautious. You should be wary of your recklessness. Be wary of your selfishness. Be wary of the fact that you may, through an act of your insatiable desire, compromise somebody else's welfare. You might lie to a woman and then get her pregnant and do something really, really irresponsible and nasty like skip town. And that isn't good. That's being a shithead. Um, or at least that's what I get from what they have to say. That's what I get from this little passage. Yeah, well that's because you pervert everything because you're a fucking maniacal, evil, fucking bastard. I mean, you're just as nasty a piece of shit as I've ever run across. How you can do this glib crap on the internet. It is so fucking vile. Um, just doing what every other sentient being does is... Right, there you go. Just be a baboon. Everybody just be a baboon. Be a baboon. That's it. That's all you're required to be. Be a fucking goddamn baboon. Or me now. A source of guilt. A source of terrible guilt. Um, I don't buy that anymore. Uh, and this is one of the great gifts, if you ask me, of the... He doesn't buy anything, so <laughs> I don't buy it anymore. You never bought anything in your life. Uh, <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, this really isn't that, you know. I mean, I can, I can just think back to when I was a kid, right? And and the, 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 the first thoughts of me having a kid, right? I thought about it. I said, okay, you get married and you have kids. And instant, almost instantaneously, the images started running through my head of the kid whapping his arm off with the lawnmower. I mean, I just started thinking about all the decisions I'm now going to be obligated to make. Because I knew how many times I almost came that close to being dead. <laughs> and it just, you know, I realized, I mean, I used to be one, you know, the dare thing. Anybody dare me to do anything, I'd do it. And I'm just like, oh man, my kid is going to be a monster. I mean, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to pad his room. I'm going to have to pad the world around him because he's going to get fucking killed. I mean, if he's anything like me, he's doomed. And that's what I was thinking. That was what my first thoughts is, holy shit, how am I going to possibly be manage this? How am I going to be responsible for this thing? Morbid antinatalist argument that is now current on YouTube. I mean, I guess I should just throw in for the flavor. See, my father was a very mechanical, decent guy in every respect, but totally unemotional. And I was an emotional basket case. So my father was a lot like this creepy guy in the sense that he was just kind of distant, you know, nice. Uh, he did, you know, he, he held my hand a couple of times crossing the street. And the funny thing is, is I remember those times because, yeah, they didn't happen that often. But every now and then he'd do something where I'd say, oh, I belong to him. He's worried about me. I mean, it would happen like two or three times a year, maybe, where I'd actually get this idea that, oh, that guy kind of thinks I'm his son. <laughs> yeah, so every now and then it would occur to me. But that's it, you know, so yeah. So obviously when I thought about being a parent, I didn't think about it in those terms. I didn't think I'd be Mr. Robot and I'd just be able to let it go and whatever happens, happens and I don't give a fuck. Because, you know, that's how a lot of people are. They just don't give a fuck. Uh, I happen to be a give-a-fucker. Give a fucker. I, you know, I'd like to give some fucks, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, the fuck you get isn't worth the fuck you get, you, the fucking you get. The fuck you get isn't worth the fucking you get. Yeah, you know, something like that. Um, I'd never really gotten into the whole subject of guilt to the extent that I did when I started to have guilt employed in that manner. And, I don't know, it's another bizarre irony, but, um, Having to justify everything, in my case, has resulted in a positive. Uh, it's resulted in 
I don't know, I guess an increased <laughs> appreciation of life and quality. Well, how would you know that's positive? How would you know? <laughs> yeah, it's positive. I've even inflated my capacity to be a monster. I leave banana peels all over the fucking place now. So he's like glorifying the fact that somehow the conversation has made him think responsibility is even nastier than it, he thought it was before. So he's even more comfortable with the idea of just fuck them all. Fuck reading the dice. Do not look at the dice. Just roll the fucking thing. Of life. Looking at guilt for what it is. Looking at responsibility for what it is and his terminology for what responsibility is Here's the punchline is... It's a terribly aggressive, damaging emotion. And there you go. So recognizing responsibility is a terribly damaging, horrible thing to do. Don't do it. Just don't recognize your responsibility. That even people who mean well abuse uh, horribly. I would suggest that you keep contact, at least from periphery, with this entire argument because it's a... Yeah, he's telling the wayward guy who's turned out to be a real little scumhole. Um, but, yeah, fine. I would suggest that he... Well, there's no point in suggesting anything. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there's no point. I would suggest he go search at the bottom of the ocean for the mystery truth that validates the existence of the replicating molecule. Very useful one. If looked at in a certain way. That is funny, though, that he said this was a good video, wayward guy. Really amazing, right? I mean, a video basically advocating, basically saying, don't look at the dice. Just roll them, baby. All the best. Yeah, fuck you. I mean, seriously, I don't, I, I don't know how you can wish me all the best when you basically told a bunch of people to throw banana peels in front of me. You basically said, it's okay, throw banana peels in front of Gary. And, and you want me to say, I can take your all the best seriously? I don't want to live in a world with a bunch of banana peel throwers, you fucking cunt. So, you're basically advocating all the worst, and then wishing people all the best. You can't advocate one thing, and then wish the other thing, and be logically consistent. That makes you a sociopath. You are a fucking mass murderer. There's just no doubt about it. No, you we're all going to read about this guy someday. I mean, really, you can't talk like this with this kind of conviction unless you've done some nasty-ass fucking shit. Yeah, he's rationalizing for a reason. He's not rationalizing this hard for no reason. He's rationalizing this hard for a reason and be very afraid fuckers.